Wow, uh, instant classic here at East High School. Afrocentric down by 17 points. They go on an 18 to three run in the fourth quarter to win their first City League Championship since 2005. Zach, how did it happen, man? Well, I talked to Coach Bates after the game, and they didn't give up a single field goal in the fourth quarter. You know, the three points for Beechcroft were all free throws. And assistant coach Nashawn Coleman, uh, many Buckeye fans might remember him <laughs> as the former player back in the 90s. Uh, but Nashawn Coleman, who's been here with Coach Bates from the very beginning, made that call, said, hey, let's go 1-3-1. And when they did that, Beechcroft was kind of shell-shocked. You know, they were passing the ball, playing stall ball, and that's not their style. And it really got them out of their rhythm. And Afrocentric just took over and Daylon Swain, he turned that switch on and I don't like comparing high school kids to pros. I, I just don't like doing it. But when Daylon Swain plays like that, he looks like Paul George. He looks like one of those just pro level guys that are six, eight and can do everything on the floor because as good as he was offensively, he was even better defensively. And that was truly the difference in the game, in my opinion. If you didn't know before the game, you know now that Daylon Swain is that dude. Who else for the Nubians stood out to you? Dan Wagner uh, scoring offensively. Dan Wagner is a microwave. He had the first <laughs> 10 points for them. Daylon had a free throw. He had 10 straight in that first quarter. So he really got them going offensively, made some plays down the stretch. Uh, LaRon Fuller off the bench, the sophomore guard came in second half was everything that coach Bates said he needed on that on that perimeter for Afrocentric and then I'd say press and steal again like a lot of kids if, if they got postered like he did in the first <laughs> half they may be hesitant to jump and that didn't stop him True. and that aggressiveness really bothered Beechcroft and they weren't able to really get anything going on the interior and Afrocentric was spacing them out so they kept them out of the paint and they had that enforcer down low so I would go those three guys Dan Wagner Leron Fuller press and steal they were incredible and then Dalen Swain as well you know superstar type game out of him. It's heartbreaking for Beechcroft. They won this game last year in the City League title. Uh, obviously not what they want going into the postseason, but this is a team that's still capable of making a very deep run in these playoffs. What do you think that they're going to show after this game and how are they going to respond to this loss? I think it's going to make them hungry because they had yet to really lose to a local team right. outside of, I believe, Hilliard Bradley. But uh, for Beechcroft, they're still the one seed. That made this game really interesting. In my opinion, it was the first city title since 2018 where anyone, it could go either way. Mm. You know, there wasn't a heavy favorite because Beach, or Afrocentric's the one seed in D3, Beechcroft's the one seed in D2. It's rarely see that. Uh, so for Beechcroft, they're a senior-laden team. They had some foul trouble in the second half that kind of hampered them a little bit, got them out of their rhythm, and uh, I think they're capable of winning a district title again. Um, they, they did in 2020. It was, their regional chance was canceled due to COVID. So I think they, they can go as far as they want. They're a group of seniors. They're connected, and this adversity is probably good for them, honestly, to face this going into the tournament because now they can realize it doesn't matter how how high how much we're up by mm. we can lose a game it's uh, not March yet but there was plenty of madness today and I'm sure we're gonna have a lot more moving forward congratulations to Afrocentric their first City League championship since 2005 after having that game taken away from them last year because of COVID a much deserved moment for this team and uh, for this uh, community of Nubians I'm ex extremely happy for coach Mike Bates he's been here for a long time he said that they've played in four final fours and they've only played in two city championship games so it's very hard to get here and I, my first city championship I covered was 2013 13. They lost at the buzzer to Northland on a tip-in. Mm. And that was the last time they played in this game. It was in this gym. It was that bucket right there. Man. So for them to get it done, it, it takes, you know, that this is a dark cloud that kind of was over them in these games. It's gone. Yeah. So I'm happy for them. And uh, Coach Bates is a, a great man, great coach, great leader. And, you know, this team, they got a chance to get four nets. That's what I told him. That's what I told him. I, I told Dalen that you got four nets. You got the first one. That's the city, the district, the regional, and the state. state. I think they can get there because they have a player in Dalen Swain that can do it and a coach who's been there before. This is a team. They can win a state championship in Division Three. It's uh, not March yet, but there was plenty of madness today, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot more moving forward. He's Zach Fleer from 270hoops.com. I'm Justin Holbrook. Brock from NBC4 signing off at East High School.